What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Dermy Wormy. And uh, I, I don't normally talk about Doctor Who on my channel. I, I a bit of backstory on me. I love Doctor Who. I Well, loved. I love Doctor Who for several years now. I, I got into it uh, during high school. A bunch of my friends started watching it and stuff, and I just fell in love with the franchise. I, uh, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was brilliant. And I'm not... Like, I'm not into Star Trek, but the, the philosophies that were brought through in Doctor Who, I gravitated to a whole lot more. I love the Doctor. I love that being. I, I love the, the story in this world. And I was actually kind of okay with the idea of, hey, being able to turn the Doctor into a female at first. I thought, hey, you know, they had it in one of, I think it was the uh, 50th episode of the, of, uh, I think it was the 50th special. I could be wrong. Uh, but when they go back to, uh, God, I cannot remember the freaking homeworld's name. Gallifrey. When they go back to Gallifrey, there is one of the security guards there. He, Doctor ends up, you know, causing him to have to regener regenerate and stuff. And he goes from being a guy to a girl. That's how I was able to headcanon. It is possible. Okay? It's possible. But I didn't like what they did. I thought they... They introduced so much BS into Doctor Who and ended up killing it with the timeless children. And I have never really gone back. I get that Doctor Who itch a lot more than anything else. And I am currently rewatching some uh, older Who. And I'm, I, I love it. I love every second of it. And when Do Russell T. Davies was announced last, it was about a year ago, maybe two years ago. To be taking over, to retaking over the franchise, uh, to grabbing it back, to hopefully re revitalize the franchise, uh, working alongside a uh, Bad Wolf and all that, I was actually kind of excited. I I was like, you know what, we could we could see some real change. I actually didn't even mind the casting of a uh, uh, I can't think of the dude's name, uh, the little. Uh, the fin boy, uh, the black fin boy guy. I, I didn't mind his casting. I thought, hey, I need to see him act for a little bit. He's a e decent actor. I need. I he he was ingratiating himself. Everybody was starting to ingratiate themselves with the fans, which is important. The fans always come first. Okay. Well, it was about I think two weeks ago when it got announced that they are not retconning the timeless children. And that really just cemented my idea that I'm not going back to Doctor Who. And this seeing going over what I'm about to go over hurts me even more. Because not only is Russell T. Davies not retconning um, the Timeless Children. He's also changing canon to fit modern sensibilities. Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies claims Davros' original look was associating disability with evil, mocks fans who disagree. So not only has Russell T. Davies now changed actual lore, you know, something he himself used to say was like very fundamental to him, something he loved, something he cherished. Russell T. Davies being the guy that helped revitalize Doctor Who in the modern era. Not only is he changing lore, he's now making fun of fans that are upset that well, I'm not even that are giving mild pushback to him. Really mild pushback. And he's being just a prick. He's doing what mo we complain about modern Hollywood creators doing. But let's get into this. Uh, we'll, we'll scroll down. First introduced in the series canon in 1975, serial, serial Genesis of the Daleks, one of the defining features of the robotic creatures. Original creator has forever been his heavily scarred and disfigured appearance, explained in canon as the result of a nuclear attack launched by a group of fall warriors during the, their war against his own Kalaid people. Now they're talking about the. Uh, Davros, not Davros, yeah, Davros. And this is what Davros used to look like. Okay, this this is what he looked like for years. He is becoming part Dalek. He's the original creator of the Daleks, He, which is like the big bat, one of the big bads of the uh, Doctor Who universe. For those of you who don't know, he is the creator. This is what he ended up looking like. Okay, this is how he looked forever. He's part Dalek, part Kalot, Cal, Cal, I, I can't, ah, 
I'm butchering what it is. I know I am, and I'm sorry about that. I do love Doctor Who, by the way. But he's he's one and the same, okay? That's what he is. This is how he's looked like forever. This is partially keeping him alive. He's been scarred due to a nuclear attack. This is who he is. And this, and this is how we see him in the this special episode that came out. Okay, this is a special look. And a lot of people thought, hey, it's a pre, it's a pre look. It looks before it's him beforehand, right? Wrong. But in the supplemental episode, Destination Scarrow, which aired on November 17th as part of the Affirmation BBC charity special, the villain, as once again portrayed by the character's regular revi uh, revival, era act revival era actor Julian Bleach, who is a fantastic Davros, was depicted without either his injuries or his signature wheelchair. Uh, more of a robotic uh, life support system, but close enough. While many fans speculated that this look at the pre-nuclear attack Davros was merely a brief Easter egg allowed by the episodes taking place at an at an earlier point in the universe's timeline, current and returning showrunner Russell T. Davis later revealed that in difference to modern sensibilities, it was actually a preview of the villain's new and permanent canon appearance. We're going to continue on and just hearing that, hearing all that just, it broke me a little bit. Reading that aloud broke me a little bit. I had such high hopes for Russell T Davies. Listen, I didn't, I hoped that he was going to retcon the timeless children or at least not mention it. Uh, even though a lot of people say he needs to mention it, he needs to retcon it. You need to do that outright. That'll help bring fans back. I would be fine with him just never addressing it and moving on. Okay. I would be fine with that. But the, that he is going in there and changing canon. Canon that he once loved and adored grinds my gears and makes me just so frustrated with life. We had long conversations about bringing Davros back because he's a fantastic character. Yes, he is. So why change him? Explain Davis during the post premiere episode of the behind the scenes show, Doctor Who Unleashed. Time and society and culture and taste have moved on. And there's a problem with the old Davros. No, there's not. There literally isn't. There's no problem with an evil being who is half... What? Khaled? Khaled? I'm probably butchering it again. And half Dalek. These are evil beings. Just because he's in a wheelchair means nothing. He is still evil and still highly intelligent. The old Davros, he's a wheelchair user who is evil. And I had a problem with that. Really? You had a problem with that? You had a problem with that. Why didn't you change it earlier? Why didn't you change it during your original run? Hmm? Oh, because you never thought to. Because you never had a problem with it until right now. A lot of us on the production team did too. Associating disability with evil. No, no, he's just an evil dude. Why? Why? You. This is actually hurting. Trust me. There's a very long tradition tradition of this. Okay. Uh, claw from freaking. Uh, what? 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 what it, claw from. Uh, Inspector Gadget. Paraplegic. Uh, not paraplegic. Has a fake hand. Okay. So what? So what that there's disability here and there? Nobody's associating disability with being evil. That's that's just you. That is that is just ah! This is the most blatant disrespect and disregard to source material I have ever seen. And from a man that once championed it. I'm not blaming people in the past at all, but the world's change, but the world changes, he continued. And when and when the world changes, Doctor Who who has to Doctor Who has to change as well. No, it doesn't. It literally doesn't. You do not need to keep touching this. You do not need to keep destroying this. This is <clears throat> I can't believe what I'm reading right now. I legitimately can't. So we made the choice to bring back Davros without the facial scarring and without the wheelchair or his support unit, which functions as a wheelchair. It's a life support system. Yes, it functions as a wheelchair, but it helps keep him alive. 
you have you once held respect for this franchise. You once honored it and kept the source material at its core. And right now I'm seeing you just bastardize it. Now I'm questioning, did you ever love it at all? Did you ever care for this at all? Or is this just a blatant cash grab that you don't even care about anymore? This, this hurts. I say this is how we see Davros now. Davis ultimately asserted. This is what he looks like. This is... This is 2023. This is our lens. This is our eyes. Things used to be black and white. They're not anymore. Davros used to look like that. And now he looks like this. We are absolutely standing by that. Well, I guess I'm never watching Doctor Who from you again. And now I don't even want to go back and watch old Who. I don't want to watch the revitalization of Who now. Because now I'm starting to see your true colors. That you never really cared about this project. You never cared about this property. Now you're just letting your own biases decide what to do with this property. You once held respect for this Russell T. Davies, and now you're butchering it. You continue to disrespect the source material. Continue to disrespect something that we once loved, that you once loved, and that hurts me to the core. But to make matters worse, he pulls the Hollywood trick. He does what, Holly, what we've been complaining about creators and writers have been doing now for years however rather than uh come here following the airing of this interview a number of doctor who fans took to instagram the showrunner's social media platform of choice to directly express to davis their disagreement with the, his rationale however rather than ignore and or engage in good faith with those who dis dis disagree with with argument with his argument is what i think they meant to say davis instead chose to meet a pair uh, a pair of them with flippant mockery one user at robbie garner this person here argued davros isn't a wheelchair user he's a particularly mutated Kalade in a life support system halfway between Kalaid and Dalek. Like I was perfectly fine seeing Davros pre-accident. I think a lot of fans have wanted to see this for some time, but to insist that this is for better representation of disabled people is just utterly bizarre. If we're not going to pretend as you suggest, Davros was never in the chair or a or he just got better, well, that undermines one of the greatest villains who ever created. Exactly. This outright undermines the character. This outright changes the character fundamentally, and now you're making him out to be something completely different due to modern sensibilities. And you want to know what Davis says? Tough. Literally, he just responds with tough. You used to love this franchise. You used to love the fans, and now you're treating them with disregard. And this one even gets worse. Likewise, uh, this guy, Dwa Boy 14, Dr. Who Boy 14, uh, likewise asked, will you be changing the Cybermen next so it doesn't upset our friends with prosthetic limbs? And I know that's kind of a, a snarky comment, but it's an accurate comment. You change this guy because, hey, he, he, he's in a wheelchair and this is bad for disabled people. So are you going to change other people because of disabled individuals? Are you? That's a legitimate question. I know it's snarky, but are you going to do this? If you start here, you got to do others. Davis responds, oh, poor baby crying emoji. This hurts me to go over. This hurts me to see. Because I once respected this man. I once admired this man to a great degree. And now I'm seeing him treat his, the source material that he once loved himself. Fans of the source material that he once respected as well and wanted to honor as well. He's now butchering and playing with and making his own because he doesn't have any respect or love for it anymore. And that hurts me to see. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it out, friends. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now. What's going on, guys? Listen, it's Christmas season coming up. And you know what makes great gifts? That's right. Coffee Brand Coffee. Coffee Brand Coffee makes wonderful gifts. And guess what? They don't just have great gifts coffees, teas, and cocos. They also got gear, they got K-cups, and also they got wonderful gift boxes. 
gift boxes it, that include all sorts of wonderful great goodies you got chocolate covered coffee beans raspberry yogurt pretzel twists sea salt milk chocolates caramel you got chocolate covered coffee beans peppermint hot cocoa spicy and sweet treat mixes kettle corn pop premium vacuum travel tumblers and all sorts of wonderful great stuff that you can get at coffee brand coffee and these make great christmas gifts so guys please check out coffeebrandcoffee.com and use promo code back taco at checkout to get 10 percent off your purchase that's coffeebrandcoffee.com promo code back taco